So hello everyone. Uh, for those of you who doesn't know me, my name is Fabio. Uh, my nick, uh, my handle is uh, Fales on IRC uh, and GitHub uh, with two S. And I will uh, talk to you. Uh, I will talk about what I learned uh, about real-time online multiplayer games uh, with Godot Engine. Uh, I was uh, doing a video game, uh, which I'm still working on a video game which is uh, supposed to be like a client server architecture, kind of Quake 3 Arena or those kind of uh, real-time multiplayer games. Uh, and I started with a like very bad implementation at first and I will try to explain what are the concepts that allowed me to get a pretty decent uh, online multiplayer with Godot Engine. So, uh, yeah, so we are um, gonna do a small introduction on general um, what uh, what are the goals of a networking multiplayer? What are the problems? What are the usual guidelines that you can find online and people will talk about? Um, and then I will a little bit go into, into the Godot level, low level networking, and then on the new, newer uh, high level multiplayer uh, networking uh, API. Uh, and I will say a few words about a small module I've wrote to uh, kind of uh, get slightly more tailored uh, uh, for me, for my game, uh, from the high level networking. It's uh, some kind of mid-level networking, uh, but let's start. So first of all, what are the goals? So uh, we want to do a multiplayer game. Uh, so first of all, uh, the idea is that more like multiple players will play together through a network. Uh, and the, the main thing is that they should feel like they are playing locally. They shouldn't uh, feel uh, uh, input delay, so when they shoot, they want to immediately see the shot starting. Uh, when they, uh, they, they don't want to see like lags, so uh, stuff uh, skipping from one point to the other. Um, and we definitely don't want cheaters. Like we don't want players to do stuff that they are not supposed to do in the game. Um, how can we achieve that? So, uh, first of all, uh, a small word about the internet. The internet is not a pipe. So the one on the left is wrong. You don't connect to a server like that. It's more the one on the right. So you start and you go through a huge graph and you don't actually know where your data is traveling. Um, and this will cause problems. And uh, I'll show you why. So networks are unreliable. That means that packets, so data you send, can take different route in this huge graph and they might either get lost, uh, they might get delayed, and they might actually even arrive two times because they get two, two different routes at the same time. Um, and they will definitely add delay, which means, uh, I mean, like there, there is the, even the light of the speed. So uh, you can imagine what on a copper twisted pair, the latency is actually even worse than light. Uh, so it will take time for your information to travel from the client to the server and vice versa. Uh, how can we solve this problem? Well, first of all, there's no one fit for all solution. It really depends on your game. So maybe, uh, I don't know, turn based game, they don't really need uh, a small delay because you still have to wait for the others, so for the other turn. So if the other one, the other player have, I don't know, 30 seconds for making his turn, if it takes 31, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, but that's a problem on real time games, like when you are actually doing immediate, like you want an immediate reaction, like you don't have to wait for the other player. You are uh, concurrently playing the game. Um, uh, of course, uh, everything should happen on the server because if something, uh, if some decision are about the game itself are taken from the client, that means that player can actually cheat. Like I can tell the server, oh, I'm not here anymore. I'm in a totally different place and that server will trust me. That's wrong because that, that's cheating. Um, uh, so usually the clients should only be allowed to send inputs, like the input that the, the player is actually uh, pressing, or maybe in some cases some commands, but in that case the server will have to check that the player is actually allowed to uh, send the, that command. Um, that command. And, uh, and the, the last one, I think it's really important, 
and almost everyone says it. So you, what you want to do is to send as little data as possible and to send it as fast or as often as possible. So you want to kind of keep the, the game in sync with the clients, um, but you don't, and you want to minimize the data you send because the higher, the, the, the bigger the packets, the data you send, the slower it will get to destination. And the higher is the chance that the packet will be lost. So uh, the common techniques to achieve those uh, kind of behaviors are, uh, first of all, UDP networking. I will show you what, uh, what it means. Uh, state synchronization, so the server decide, uh, actually do the simulation. Uh, and it sends uh, the, the current state information to the clients uh, in, a, in a way to synchronize it. Um, then you want interpolation. So you don't want when the client receive uh, some, uh, some new, uh, the new state, you don't want the client to just move the object to the new place. You want it to kind of smoothly transition to that position. Uh, so the player won't feel lag. Um, uh, and the other te techniques are, of course, compressions and size optimization and lag compensation. Uh, so on the right side, you will see, well, uh, the first one is uh, interpolation. Uh, it's not uh, very clear, but I will go a little bit deeper into that later. Uh, and then there is um, compression, size optimization. So if you look at that, that's a Boolean, like those uh, four cells. Um, it's uh, how it's uh, binary encoded by Godot. It's very common because in C++, a Boolean is usually four bytes. Uh, but when you send it over a network, you actually only need one byte. One byte. Well, you could use one bit, but that, that may be too much o over optimization. It, it really depends on uh, the number of Booleans you send. For example, if you are sending eight Booleans, then you can use one byte for all of those Booleans. Um, and the last one is a quite complicated thing. Uh, I still haven't fully implemented. I still haven't implemented it in my game. Uh, it's a very complicated technique. It might be susceptible to hacking somehow. So you have to be careful when you do that. And it's called lag compensation. Uh, and it's a technique where the server uh, basically the server knows how uh, what's the latency of the client, the average latency of the client. So when the server receives an input from the client it kind of roll back the state internally to half of the delay here, the ping, the latency from the client, and apply the commands there, and then fast forward again the game. Uh, as I said, that can be uh, susceptible, like uh, that can be uh, act somehow by cheaters. So there are like, you have to kind of set the maximum number of latency. So how long can I roll back? Uh, and also do additional checks to see if the client kind of spike the, li the lag when he's shooting to uh, forcibly, uh, let's say, uh, cheat. <laughs> so, oops, this one. so TCP versus UDP, uh, this is a very common thing. So uh, there are two main protocol used over the internet. There are many more, but those are the most common one. There's TCP and UDP. So TCP is connection based. Uh, it, it has reliable delivery, ordered delivery, high and, and for this reason, high latency. So it's basically a protocol that takes, he knows that the networks are reliable and it takes uh, certain steps to ensure that your packet is actually always delivered. So if the packet gets lost, uh, it will send it again. Uh, it's also a best effort protocol. So it's not really certain that you will receive the packet, but you are almost certain. Yes, I was getting closer. <laughs> um, while on the other side, we have on the right side, we have UDP. UDP is connectionless, which means you don't know who is connected to you. It's like opening your door and people throw stuff inside it and you don't know when, like who is outside. Uh, you, you kind of know, yeah, there is a guy like this, but when he goes away, you don't know it because uh, he, you see that something, nothing is coming through anymore, but you don't know why, if he's just uh, tired of doing that or, uh, or he just went away. Um, it, it has, uh, for this reason though, uh, like uh, it has unreliable delivery. So it means you just send the packet, you throw the things you want, 
and you just forget about it. You send it and who, who cares? Will it arrive? Who knows? Uh, it, the delivery is also unordered. That means that the first data I send might arrive after the second data I send. Because as we saw before, the network, networks are complicated. So the packets can take different routes and uh, for this reason take different time to arrive. Um, uh, but this allows UDP to have very low latency because you don't have a, this huge protocol that try to resend and checks uh, how much bandwidth you have or stuff like that. Um, so, uh, of course, we will see that UDP for this reason is useful for networking, but it also causes problems, of course. So I'm going to show you a small echo server uh, with UDP, a low level uh, with Godot. So you just, uh, you, you can keep an array of clients that are connected or that you received from because it's connectionless. Uh, you will have to create a packet pure UDP uh, object. I'm still, yep. Um, and uh, then in the, well, I'm doing it in the ready function. You will probably do it when the user actually press, I don't know, start server or something like that. Uh, you call listen, so you start listening on a specific port. Um, and then uh, in the process function, I, I forgot to set process through, uh, but it's all right. Uh, you kind of uh, check, do I, uh, did I receive some packet? Oh yes, uh, I received the packet, okay. Uh, who is the guy who is sending it to me? And I can get his IP and this port, um, and, and then I can say, uh, do I know a client like that? that? Was I ever contacted by someone who has that IP and port? If it doesn't have that, uh, if, if I didn't have uh, that, I can add it and say, this is a new client. So I can say, oh, someone connected, even if it's connectionless. Um, and then I can uh, read the, the message, as I said, uh, so you can see there's a get var um, or get packet. Uh, get var actually allows you and put var allows you to uh, uh, send variant like go dot variables uh, without having to uh, actually serialize them into binary format. Um, and then I can, I don't know, broadcast that message to all the clients. So I have the connected or Previously, uh, I have the list of clients that previously contacted me and I can tell them, okay, I received this, me this, that, this message and th th this is it. So, so this is a simple echo server. So it just, you send something to it and it will try to send that information back to all the clients that previously contacted him. Um, this is of course the client. Uh, here I forgot again to set process through. Um, this is simpler. Uh, I have a send data where I just put the data and on the ready function or where, when the user actually uh, press uh, connect, you just set the, set, the send address of, the, the, of that UDP uh, because there is no connect, the, there's no connection. So you just tell the UDP socket, uh, I'm going to send to this guy. Uh, and then every time you put some packet, it will try to send to that guy. Uh, but you don't know if that guy, guy is actually receiving that packet. You don't even know if that guy ac actually exists. It might be an, an, an IP that is not on the network right now. Um, so, and uh, yeah, so, and when you, on the process, uh, again, I can get the available packet count. And, uh, and um, yeah, I'm missing also. Uh, get var, uh, but yeah, uh, so, and, and you can print the message you're receiving from the server. So when the server, when you send some data, uh, you put it there, the server would apply to you, oh, I received that from you, um, and, and you can print it to console. So, but there are problems, no, with UDP. So how can we detect client disconnection? Like, because we can detect connection somehow, by saying, oh, I didn't know this guy and now he's sending me something, but when can we tell he actually disconnected? Uh, how can we detect when packets arrive out of order? So well, how can we detect if the data, the data the specific client sent us, so I'm sending uh, Akian one and then I'm sending him two. 
for some reason, it might receive first two and then one. Uh, because, as I said, the network are huge and take different routes. Um, so, uh, and how can we detect and resend packet lost if we want it to be reliable? Like, if we, we don't usually, most of the message we'll send, uh, we don't really care if they arrive. If they don't arrive, we'll send it again after a few seconds. But maybe there are some specific message like, I don't know, a GUI update or something like that, which we say, yeah, we, we send this like once every five seconds. So we want it reliable. It's fine. It doesn't have to be uh, that fast anyway. Um, so there are ways to do that. Uh, they are really complicated. You see this text, wall of text. Uh, and, but the, the keyword is mess. It's really a mess. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, for, to detect this connection, we can say, OK, so um, a, a connection is when someone sends us something. Uh, a disconnection is if we don't receive something, uh, anything. If we don't receive anything uh, from that client for a certain amount of time, we can say that he disconnected. Uh, so and to ensure that uh, clients that are still connected doesn't get recognized as disconnected by the server, we have some kind of pinging technology. So we send a small UDP packet every, I don't know, half a second or second. And then if after 10 seconds we didn't receive any ping packet, we say, oh, OK, that, that guy disconnected. Um, uh, for uh, ordering, how can we detect ordering? Uh, well, this is uh, quite simple. Um, so we can just add uh, a kind of timing. It doesn't have to be like a, a timestamp. It's just uh, like a, a number that always increase. Uh, and uh, so the client uh, sends uh, this packet uh, saying, OK, uh, this is what I'm doing now. And I'm doing it at 1. And then he sends another one. And he says, I'm doing this at 2. And then if the server will keep track of the last received time, uh, and then uh, we'll say, OK, I, the last one was two, and now I have one. OK, one is wrong, because I, I already have a newer information. I can discard the previous one. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't wait for ordering. Like, it's not a proper ordering. It's just ensuring that the packets you receive are always newer. And you just deal with the older one by dropping them, by discarding them, like they, did, they weren't uh, delivered at all because they are no, no longer relevant. Imagine a state update. Like the state says, the, game, uh, the state of the game is the, position, the player is in position 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and then I send a newer one, which is the position is 3-3. Three, three. Uh, so if the server already received 3-3, three, three, it doesn't want to go back. You don't want it to go back, there because that's an older information, or the client, sorry. Um, and the, the last one is really complicated. So how can we achieve reliability? Uh, it's, it's really complicated. It's based on acknowledgments uh, and sequence number. So you, every time you send a packet, which you kind of flag as reliable by adding a small flag in the packet itself, um, you add, like previously, a time or a sequence number. Um, and then uh, the, the other party will have to send you acknowledgment, saying, I, I received that sequence number. I received that sequence number. I received it. Uh, and then you have to wait until you received it before sending new one. And in case it, you don't get a reply uh, saying, I received it, you have to resend it. So you have to keep a queue of the message and send them and wait for each of them or a, a bulk of them to be acknowledged together. And then you can send the new one. Um, so if you want to dig a little bit into the lower level networking, I really suggest you have a look at the function bar to bytes and bytes to var, because they, what they do is they convert the variant to the binary format, so to a row array or a byte array. And then you can actually add uh, additional flag, additional data, like the time, the sequence number, the acknowledgments. And then when you receive that, you can strip those information and call again bytes to var to get the, the variable back, yeah, like in GDescript. Uh, no, it's always here. So uh, likely, um, our lovely Redux uh, did some work for higher level networking, um, which is quite cool. 
Uh, this uh, higher level networking is based on the ENET library. Um, this might change in the future or might be different in the future for a specific platform. Uh, but so what the ENET library does is all the things I was telling you before, which is a mess, they do it already. And it's a very tiny library um, written in C, uh, quite nice, uh, although a little bit old. Um, and uh, it allows for sending both reliable and unreliable messages over UDP with those techniques I described before. Um, and this uh, Godot high level networking is based on RPC, so remote procedure calls. Um, I'll show you what they are, more or less. But uh, first of all, let's talk about network modes. So um, since you are going to be calling some, uh, some functions on, on, on a remote client uh, or, or, or a remote server, depending on if you are sending a state update or an input update from the client, um, you, you have to be sure that no one is cheating, again. So you have to be sure that if you receive uh, a, a, a call to a specific function, that client is actually allowed to call that, that function, that you can actually execute it safely. So first of all, there is a, uh, a kind of uh, network mode at the node level. Uh, the node can be master or slave. So if you create a server, if you start a server, a, a, a high level multiplayer server, I'll show you how to do it later, you will be assumed to be master unless you specify differently. Uh, if you create a client, you will assume it to be slave unless you specify differently. Um, and then you have specific uh, um, modes for each function or variable that you want to synchronize over the network. So um, if a, uh, a specific variable or function is set as sync, it means that when you call that remote procedure call, uh, that code can be will be executed both on the, on the master, uh, the slaves, and locally. Like you will send it through the network, but you will also execute it locally. Uh, if you set it as remote, it will only be called remotely. So uh, if I'm calling RPC this method, uh, I, it will not be called in my instance of the game, only in the remote instances of the game. Uh, and then there are another two keywords uh, which are related to the network modes themselves of, of the node, uh, which are slave and master. So a slave function will only be called on slave nodes. And at the same time, uh, the, the master function will only be called on master nodes. So um, uh, basically, uh, this tells us which function is, uh, who is authoritative in that case. So uh, is that a function that is uh, where the client actually decide what to do, for example, inputs? Uh, or is that something that is uh, uh, related to the server, like where the server decides what the state is? And, and that's, for example, the case of state updates, so game updates to the client, uh, because the, a client should never send a state update, should, ne should, not, should never tell other people, uh, this is how the game is right now, because that's exploitable, of course. Um, so. Uh, this is a small example. Uh, 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 sh this is wrong. Damn. Damn it. Not slave. Master. Master. <laughs> uh, so, and it's also not needed like that. I should have. Uh, I should. Uh, I didn't have to put that there anyway because you, you, it's since it's a server, it's automatically considered to be master, uh, and I should put master anyway there if I want to. Uh, so let's assume the mode is master here. So you basically create a new server and you set that in the tree as the network peer. So the tree knows he, is, he has a server and he is going to be master uh, in general. Uh, and then let's say we have a, a function that we call periodically that is uh, update remote state. Um, and I don't know, in the state we can put the position and the linear velocity of a specific node. Let's say this node. Um, and then uh, we 
I, I'm using a time function, I will, I will, uh, a time variable. I will show you why. Uh, it's for the reason of unreliability. So I'm using an unreliable remote procedure call to update the states, because that will ensure the lowest possible latency. Uh, but I have to be careful that the, the state we are getting is the most up-to-date state. It's not some older state when I'm on the client. So, and, and then I make that RPC unreliable, which will call update state, which is set as slave. So, which is set as slave. So, so it, it will only be called on nodes that are marked as slave. So if some client tried to cheat and send that, that function to uh, th that uh, remote procedure call to the server, the server will say, no, I'm master. I'm not going to run it. Uh, in this case, you will run it because I, sought, uh, so I set the mode as slave because it's a bug. Uh, but you, you got the idea. Uh, so in the next slide, you will see the client implementation. This one is slave correctly. Um, it creates a client, it connects uh, to the given port, uh, and, and this is the slave function where the update of the state happened. So he has to keep track of the last time, uh, of the last update he received. Um, so he receives it and he says, okay, so if the last packet I received is newer than the one I'm receiving now, um, I can just drop it because it's not relevant anymore. Um, and then uh, I can say last time is equals time, so I update the last received timing. Uh, and then I could either just set the position and, and set the, the velocity, or I, could, I can interpolate between them. And if you notice, I'm always interpolating between the current position and the, and the one from the server, OK? So this way, the, the, the user will see a smooth transition to the actual position where the, the, the object should be, uh, and not some kind of jumping around. Um, so there are a lot of optimization that we can do on this very small piece of code. Um, first of all, you should try to bundle homogeneous data uh, in the same state update. So let's say we know that we have uh, at most, I don't know, 16 player. And we know that we can fit the information for 16 players in less than 400, 500, 450 bytes, which is kind of the limit you want for UDP, because if you go, if you use more bytes than that, uh, the packets is more likely to be dropped. And it might also result in fragmentation, which is also uh, increase the, the, the chance of a lost packet. So we know that we can fit 16 play, the, the information about 16 players in 400, 450 bytes. So we, instead of sending one state update for every player, we send a single state update for all the players. Uh, this way, we lower the overhead, uh, and we also um, uh, kind of you know optimize the whole networking process because we are uh, um, successfully sending less data, which is one of the main guidelines for doing networking. Uh, and the other one is uh, um, oh, yeah, of course we need to optimize the state update because as I showed you before, uh, if we send a boolean, we waste three bytes at least. Uh, and we can just make it smaller. We can make it fit in one byte. So we can put it in a row array and just say, OK, the, 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 the Boolean is the first one, uh, and it's just a 0 or a 1. Um, and it's one byte instead of 4. So if you have 16 players, we saved 3 times 16 bytes. That's, that's huge. Um, and of course, you, you might want to use prediction so in the previous example, I was updating the client to, to the last known server position. Uh, that position is not the right one, because there is always lag. The, 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 that's not where you are. Uh, in some simulation, most simulation, you can do some prediction, because you know that 
uh, a specific player is going is in a, in a specific place and you know that he is going in a specific direction. So instead of saying I'm gonna interpolate through the known state, you can say I'm gonna interpolate to the new state times a value uh, plus uh, sorry the new state the new position let's say plus the, velo the velocity times a certain amount of value because I know that in half a second I will be in if nothing changes I will be in that position plus the velocity times 0 0.5 seconds so uh, and this way you kind of compensate a little bit for the fact that the user uh, is always um, is never in real time because you kind of fake the direction. It's, it might not be the actual direction where the player is going, because if he pressed another button, that might change, of course. Uh, but it still have a way better feeling for the user, because it doesn't feel like he's old. Like he, he, in most of the cases where, where the, the, you're going forward, and you keep going forward for, I don't know, one second. So all those predictions will be correct and the user will actually see almost like it's in real time because you do the prediction on, on that. Um, and yeah, so if you want to a uh, little bit of uh, information on the, uh, how the um, data or, or how the variants are serialized in Godot, there's that link. Uh, you will see that you can optimize quite a lot if you want. Uh, also, maybe sometimes you are using integer, but you know that that integer will never have a value more than 255, so you can use a byte. Or you know that it won't be more than uh, 65,500, whatever, so you can use just two bytes, uh, and so on. And that, and that actually saves a lot of space in the packet, so saves data and, and makes the delivery faster and more reliable. Um, I also did a small module myself to kind of uh, use the full power of a net, uh, of the ENET library, um, which doesn't use RPC. I mean, it's compatible with the RPC system, uh, but I don't think it's the main uh, goal of it. Uh, it's more like simplifying a little bit how to deal with uh, networking when you really want to optimize. So um, what it does is it allows you for simple functions that are just broadcast, sent to everyone, or send, sent to a specific client. Uh, it uses signal to uh, notify connection, disconnection, and received packets. Uh, and it allows for unreliable but ordered channels. So you don't have to deal with the time yourself, last received time, time, when I'm gonna drop the packet because the packet is too old based on the last one I received and so on. And it allows multiple channels because every, the ordering is kept on, you can think of a channel as something like, uh, every channel have its own time. So you can have different messages, um, which are have different times because maybe I'm sending you the clients, but the update for uh, for the state, and uh, or, or I'm sending the clients, but the updates of the player and the updates of the I don't know ballets that are around, uh, and those are heterogeneous data, uh, and I would send them in a different in different packets, uh, but they are not related. Like their time is not related. If I received um, a a player update with number four, and then I received a ballot update with number three, I don't want to discard the number three, because that's actually valid, because it's a ballot, it's not players, so it's something else to update. Um, uh, just a note, it will probably not included in Godot, uh, because it's uh, some kind of mid-level networking, as I said, and there's not much interest in it yet. Maybe if their interest rises a bit, it will. Uh, but I will definitely port it into to the C API by Caruffel. N for the Yeah? N for the user. N? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, uh, one question. Uh, yeah. Where is this module? Uh, 
Uh, located if you want to try it. Oh, yeah, the module is on GitHub. I forgot the link. So if you got on GitHub, and then uh, it's uh, uh, my account, my user is uh, Fales, F A L E S S with two S because the GitHub account was <laughs> taken. Yes. Um, and, uh, and there's a, a repository is called uh, it, uh, Better Inet or something like that. Or Benet, or I think it's called Better Inet. Um, uh, I will double check because I have two or three branches I'm working on, one for the 2.2, one for the 3.0, and then I have another one for the new patches I'm doing. So, but the master <coughs> branch should be working on 2.2. Uh, but there's a, a, a branch for 3.0 because there's a compa like API changes. So yeah. Um, but I think yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to know a little bit more about networking in general, I highly recommend the, the first link. Uh, it's a bit old, but it's really good. And it gives you a glimpse on, on how complicated it is to do proper networking. And the, the author actually starts from, he wants to synchronize a simulation. And it starts from a very, very bad synchronization. And they arrive to a very, very good, almost real-time uh, simulation, uh, which is good. And then there's another article, which I still have to finish uh, reading, about lag compensation from uh, Valve, uh, how they do it in the um, source engine. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not uh, like really into lag compensation yet, because I'd, I'd say not every game, game need it. And if you don't need it, it's better if you don't have it, because it might be exploitable. So other questions? Just four questions. Maybe we can pass the microphone so that it's yes. recorded on the video. And uh, don't look too near, because uh, yeah, the volume is a bit high. Don't look uh, too near. Not too near. Yeah, it's okay. OK, the, yes. per the first question. Yes. Do Goodot uh, support multi-threaded networking on all platforms? So. So uh, Godot uh, doesn't use uh, threading because threading is something uh, quite from the past, actually, for networking. Uh, it uses asynchronous uh, sockets, so asynchronous uh, input-output. Uh, basically, the threads are managed at operating system level when you do those kind of things. Uh, but uh, that doesn't apply when you... so. That's OK when you receive. So for receiving, uh, it's, uh, it, it's like it's treated. It's actually asynchronous. So it doesn't block. When you send, uh, at least for UDP, for now, it does block. So it does like a, a busy loop uh, while the operating system tells him to wait. Um, I'm, I'm planning to add an option to have uh, proper, uh, like exposed to GD script, uh, uh, like non-blocking. Non uh, operations on uh, when putting, when writing data. So the second related question is, if you have two threads in the game and one is reading and one is writing, can you run into trouble on some platforms? So if you have two threads uh, in the game, one for reading, one for writing, you definitely want to use a mutex, a mutual exclusion or some kind of semaphore. So at least you don't, because you don't, you can't access the same resource from different threads if you don't want crashes or misbehavior. So you can just use a mutex or a semaphore. Uh, they are implemented in uh, GDScript too, like they are exposed to GDScript so you can use them. Yes, yes, you have to add them explicitly, uh, otherwise you will run into issue. Uh, threading is always hard, um, and, uh, and you have to be careful when you do it, so try to rely on threading only if you really, you're really sure you need it. Uh, but again, for reading, for example, uh, you, there's no reason for having a, a reading thread uh, when it comes to con sockets, like connections, because that's already managed by the operating system. So it, it will never block. Yeah. The, the, the third last question. The, the third last question is? <laughs> the third last question on the same subject is, is there any example game uh, for Godot that uses multi-threading for reading and writing with a mutex? 
Okay, not that I think, not that I know of, um, but we might work on something like that, maybe, maybe even now. Now, yeah, <laughs> after this, or yeah, between today and tomorrow, we can make a new demo uh, to be put on uh, on the demo page on the demo repository for it. Yes, definitely. Other questions? Yep. So. So for the UDP connection, you said that uh, it's hard to detect uh, when the client disconnects. Yes. Uh, can you not send uh, like a specific packet that encodes this disconnection message? Say, for example, when uh, you know you close the window or something like that, you have the close window notification or something like that. Can you not uh, send this message then? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Um, it's uh, somehow like uh, the TCP does something like that. Uh, the, the problem is that what happens if the client crash badly or the users run out of battery or maybe that packet you send is not received by the server. Then you, you just say, yeah, you, you just keep that client like it's connected forever. Uh, you, 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 you actually... Properly, you send it and... Yes, yes, yes. So if uh, the the thing is, you probably, as I can say, you probably want to do both. So when a client disconnects properly, uh, you can send that message. So you don't have to wait for the timeout, and you can uh, immediately notify the other clients, and, and everything is smoother. Uh, but you still need to do pinging and and kind of timeout checking, uh, because otherwise you might have like a, a, a dead client or 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 a malicious client. Or a malicious client, someone who keeps uh, contacting you from different IPs, uh, and you keep opening new, adding new clients, 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 and that means that when you send the, the data, if you broadcast them to all the client, that will means that you might have to send that specific packet to I don't know 2,000 clients, so it will clog your network and and make the performance worse. So yeah. That's it. But uh, as I said, uh, the inet library basically does that for you, so you don't have to worry about that. It, it signals for you uh, the uh, client disconnected. The yeah, the low level. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. So yeah. Any other question? Okay. Yeah, there is one. Uh, I, yeah, I think you have to get close, or I can repeat the question. The, the yeah, question, maybe. Yeah. So when you use the high-level API, how are the nodes uh, identified over the networks? Um, so uh, I added a comment. Uh -huh. So when you send the RPC, you have you, the nodes, the sending node and the receiving node must have the same path in the scene, okay? Otherwise, it will not work because that's how you recognize which node you should call the method. You should check if it has the method. Uh, and then, so it does that. If the, there is a node with that path, then uh, it tries to check if that node on that path have that method. If the node on that path have that method, then it checks if it's actually, if it can be called, like if it's a slave or a remote call or a sync call. And then in that case, uh, you will actually apply it. Uh, if any of these conditions are not met, the RPC is lost because something is wrong. Someone is either trying to cheat or, or the developer did some mistakes somehow. But I think that the question was different. The question was how do you detect uh, the ID of the client? Uh, oh, the question was how do you detect? Yes, nodes are identified by their paths. So that's how you identify a node, the node that should receive the RPC. The other question is, how do you uh, know which, which client is which? Um, well, uh, when you uh, detect a new client, because you detect a new client, what is it, server? So uh, in the high level networking, I didn't show it here, but actually the, um, 
you will receive from the tree, you will receive a signal that you can listen to that is uh, client connected or connected, something like that. Um, and, and, that the, and that will tell you, give you an ID that it generates uh, uniquely for every new client that have, uh, and the client is actually identified uniquely by also the IP address and, and the port, because that, that's unique. Like you, can have, you can't have different clients on, on the same IP and port. And the server always has ID, ID one, yeah, oh, uh, one. one, I think one, yeah. It's a number That's a good question, but I don't think, uh, so the question is, um, uh, do we need to make the uh, path small because otherwise uh, uh, we, we will waste more bytes? Uh, <coughs> I asked that question myself. I didn't get a proper answer. Uh, I, I think so. But maybe uh, since it's a string name, uh, I, I, I will uh, check that uh, for you later in the code, but uh, it's a string name, so it might do some kind of optimization. Uh, mm, yeah. Send the, hash. Send the hash, for example, yes. Somehow, yes. But uh, I'll double check that in, code, uh, in the code later for you. Yes, uh, yeah, you can ask the question, I'll repeat it. Can uh, the engine be fooled? Yeah, okay, so the, the question is, uh, uh, can the system be fooled by uh, basically what is called uh, IP spoofing? So uh, a client faking his IP address and port. Is that yeah, is the question? Yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, when sending key presses for other player, um, uh, so a, a typical technique is, uh, so when you manage multiple players, um, each play, you can put the name of the node as the ID of the player, and then when you receive the remote procedure call, you can check like if the ID is correctly, uh, is, is the same one. Uh, that's uh, just one of the technique. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, it might be fooled. I'm actually, uh, uh, this, was, w this is one of the uh, main reason why I'm still not sure the API, high level API will stay exactly the same because I think even with that workaround, you might still be susceptible to some kind of hacking or cheating. Uh, and I'm trying to make a demo of this spoofing to, to see. Uh, but I, I, so theoretically, no, for what others say, but I, I'm skeptic on this. So I, I, I'm actually working on, uh, on proving it or, or disproving it. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything else? Okay. So thank you very much. <laughs>